A damaged recoil spring can cause problems with the starting mechanism of your chainsaw and if you'd like to know why and how to diagnose and find some remedies then keep watching this video because I'm just about to explain. Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to be specific in why the recoil spring can cause problems for your starting mechanism on your chainsaw and why indeed it's vital that your spring is in good order. Of course there are many more reasons why a chainsaw recoil mechanism would fail. This is only specific to the spring but if you want to watch the full version of this video which goes through many reasons then please find it in the link below in the description. And so there can be many symptoms of a defective recoil spring and that can be the recoil cord doesn't retract fast enough or it seems like it's sticking or binding in some way or it doesn't retract at all. These are just a couple of things that can go wrong out of many. But of course in the beginning we can only suspect that we've got a problem with the recoil spring and so it's important not to misdiagnose it being the spring too early because you could be taking on a lot more work than need be. So once the recoil has been removed, I like to have a visual check all around. Does the pulley look okay? Is there any cracks and damage anywhere on the pulley or around on the casing? Is there anything that looks like it would be catching, stopping this recoil from operating correctly? But if that's not the case, and we definitely suspect the spring, we need to remove the pulley anyway. But before we do, if there is tension now on this spring that we know of, then we must remove the tension of the spring so that when we remove the pulley, it will come off easier. I find it best to pull this part of the string, pulling off some rope from the pulley. I then intermittently hold the pulley with my thumb, stopping it from springing backwards. I then take this part of the rope and I place it into that notch cutout on the edge of the pulley and I allow the spring to turn the pulley back, in this case it's counterclockwise, one full turn. And then it should have took the tension from the spring. If it needs two rotations backwards, then that's no problem, we can do that, as long as there's no tension on that spring. So really what we're looking to get here, if we haven't already got a limp recoil rope, then we're looking to get a limp recoil rope, and we can do the next step. And that next step is to remove the centre retaining screw that holds the pulley in place. And so in this case, I need my Phillips headed screwdriver. And now, simply leaving the cord in situ on the handle and the pulley, I just lift off the pulley, leaving behind the recoil spring. Then we need to have a look at the recoil spring itself. So we need to remove that. And the best way to remove it is to turn the recoil housing upside down and knock it on the table. And there we should have the recoil spring. And hopefully it's still neatly packed into its housing like this rather than exploding out like this. But if this does happen, then I do have a video on how to replace this. It's in the link below in the description. But that is of course providing that the recoil spring is in good order and reusable. The spring I have here is actually in good order. And so simply put, when it's all in situ inside the recoil housing, the recoil pulley sits on top of the recoil spring just like this. There's an opening in the pulley that allows the protruding area of the spring to fit into and as the pulley turns, it turns the spring. The more the pulley turns, the more tension's being put on that spring. When I take the tension off the cord and that of course spins the pulley back the opposite way and pulls the cord back in. So let's compare this to a damaged recoil spring. And instantly you can see that there's some huge differences there. We're under no illusion as to which one is the damaged one. You can see all of this rust and the breaks in the spring steel. Well this spring is completely scrap, so we couldn't use it anyway. But you'll notice when they go rusty like this, you can see the rust protruding outwards. So when this spring's in use and it needs to turn, this rust would bind. It would bind to the other metal coils within the spring and also the spring housing and the recoil housing. And so because the rust grows outward into those two surfaces pushing against them, this would also restrict the spring from moving efficiently. But if we take a look at this area here, that's supposed to fit into the notch on the pulley, you can see some obvious differences there between these two, of how far the ends of the recoil springs actually protrude into the centre. We can see that it should be further out like this. Otherwise it won't be out enough to firmly fit into the notch on the pulley and of course it would then slip, not allowing the pulley to be recoiled back in properly. In fact I have seen situations in the past where the catchment area of the spring here is completely missing so it's broken off. And obviously if this is missing there'll be no recoil action at all. And similarly I've seen damage to this end of the spring where there's a break 
allowing the whole spring to rotate inside the housing. And this of course is highly likely to result in a limp recoil rope. So upon inspection if we find either of these two problems then we need a new recoil spring. But as I've already said this spring is so bad that it's scrap anyway. And when you buy a new spring they normally come well lubricated with oil or grease. But if your old one's not damaged and you're just refitting it I always give it a shot of oil just to keep that rust at bay for longer. And then if we're confident all is well and the problem's been rectified we can go ahead and put this recoil back together again. We need to keep around about a foot of limp rope. And before we place the pulley onto the spring we must make sure that the protruding part of the spring fits into the notch on the back of the pulley. And then we'll refit the retaining screw and tighten it up nicely. And then just make sure this is nice and free, which it is. And then as before we take this part of the rope, we put it into the notch, we turn it clockwise against the spring and create some tension on there. And if it doesn't feel like it's enough tension, then we can repeat that process, go round once more. And at that, this particular one's at enough tension to pull that recoil rope back in nicely. But again, pull the rope right out and make sure that the rope ends on the pulley before the spring gets up to its maximum tension, else otherwise it will cause further damage to the spring. And so how do we know if it is undesirably maxing out on the spring tension? Well, I pull the string out until it stops and then I try and turn the pulley that little bit further and hopefully there's a nice free half a turn or so more there. And so what do we do if we find out that the spring is maxing out? Well, what I do is this. I take hold of the rope and then I release one turn of spring tension so that now we're left with a limp cord again. I then push this excess cord up through the handle just to take out the slack that's there. And I pull the string out enough to make a new knot in the correct place that just takes up that slack without putting any extra tension on the spring. And whilst we've lost a couple of inches off the rope, we've no longer got a limp cord and there'll be less tension on that spring. And now what do we do with this excess piece of rope? Well, if it's not too long, we can just tuck it in there into the handle. But I personally prefer to be a little neater and cut off the excess. And to prevent the ends of this rope from fraying, I simply singe the ends with a cigarette lighter and then wipe it with an old cloth immediately. And then that will give it a lovely professional looking finish. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video. And please do take a look down in the description below where I've got some links to my website for some free downloads. I've designed these to help with diagnostics, troubleshooting and repairs of two-stroke engines, mainly chainsaws. The best of it is they're printable so you can take them into the workshop with you and work at your own pace. There are some paid downloads but most of them are and will continue to be free. And I shall be continuing to add new free content here so please do keep your eyes on this side of the site. And in the meantime I shall be back soon. Thank you for watching.